Hey, and welcome back to another video. And today I'm going to show you Autogen logging. Now you might be asking, how can this help me and what can it be used for? Well, we can take a look at performance analysis of the LLM calls. We can see how long it took the chat to complete, how many tokens did we use, what was the cost, unless you're using open source local LLMs, and we can simply log the response. Well, how it works is we'll start the log before we initiate the chat for Autogen. And then after it's over, then we'll simply call it to stop the log. And then what happens is stores this performance analysis into a database for us. Well, let's see how it looks in code. The first thing we're gonna do is call autogen.runtimelogging.start. And for the configuration, we're just gonna give a DB name. Here I give it logs.db. And then we'll have some initiate chat logic. And then we'll call autogen.runtimelogging.stop. After that's done, it's going to create a logs.db for me if I haven't ran this already, and then insert the rows of data. And then we can retrieve this data and see the performance analysis of our calls. One way to do that is to use SQLite Browser. This is a free software where all you need to do is open up your database in the software, and then you can see all the tables and then all of the rows of data for each table inside of your database. And here, for instance, the cost of 0.0, .0 is whenever I use GPT 3.5 Turbo. It's not exactly free, it just is very minimal sense. And then between the two and three cents range, that's when I use GPT-4. So you can see the cost increase. Another way is to install the pandas library, and then we can retrieve the data how we want and make it look nice in our terminal. I think this would be particularly useful for open source local LLMs. And so we can decide which one was the quick to finish the task, which one used the least number of tokens, and which one gave us the better responses. Well, let's get into the code and look at some examples. All right, well, the first thing we need to do is create two files. We're gonna create a main Python file and then the OpenAI configless JSON file to hold our model and API key. You could also use this to store the base URL if you're using open source local LLMs. So over on the configless JSON file, I just simply had the model I'm gonna use and then you would insert your API key here. And if you're using a base URL or something like LM Studio, you could also paste that here. And now back in our main Python file, the first thing we need to do is set up our imports, which means that we also now need to install them. We just need to open up our terminal and then type in pip install pyautogen and pandas. And now we need to create the LLM config for the assistant agent. We really only need the config list property here, which is calling autogen.configList from JSON and give it the OAI config list JSON file we created earlier. And what this is gonna do is get the model in the API key that we stored in there. And then that'll later be used for the LLM call. And now we can start our logging. So we're gonna call autogen runtime logging dot start. And for the configuration, like I showed in the PowerPoint slide, we're gonna give it a DB name and call it logs.db. Over here in my autogen logging directory where this file is, I don't have a logs.db. It will create this for us automatically whenever it's done. And then for this simple example, I'm just gonna have an assistant agent which I pass in the name and the LLM config that we created above. For the user proxy agent, we give it a name. We don't really want it to execute any code because in this case, we're just gonna ask it a question. The human input mode is never because I'm not gonna talk back and forth with the LLM call. Whatever happens, that's what we're gonna use. And then we just have a simple termination message. Then we say user proxy dot initiate chat with the assistant and the message is gonna be what is the height of the Sears tower only respond with the answer and then terminate. And then after initiate chat's over, we just simply call autogen.runtimelogging.stop to end the logging. And now you could stop here and you can skip ahead to where I talk about SQLite browser, but I'm gonna show you the code to use pandas so we can see it in the terminal. What I'm first gonna do is just have a function to get the logs. I'm gonna pass in the DB name. By default, it's gonna be logs.db that we are gonna be creating. And then there are several tables in there, but the one we care about is chat completions. I'm gonna use SQLite to connect to the database, have a select statement from that table to retrieve information, execute that query, fetch all the rows of data. I'm gonna gather all the column names, zip them into objects, make a dictionary out of it. Basically this function is gonna get all the rows of data from the chat completions table in the database. And on a side note, this will all be on my GitHub so that you can use this as well. We're gonna call that function, store into a log data variable, convert that to a data frame, we're going to add a total tokens column based on the response. And then for the request, based on the request, we're gonna get the content or the chat. And then also for the response, we're also gonna get the specific content from the response of the LLM as well. Now let's just run this to look at an example. Here we started the logging session ID that we printed above when we started the logging. We asked it the question of the height of the Sears Tower. It responded, that is now known as the Willis Tower and it's 1,450 feet tall. Now, what we did is there's only one row of data in this database and there's six columns total. We have an ID, you can't see here, that's what this zero is. 
the requests and the responses are pretty long, so we're not seeing everything in the terminal. But at the end, we have the end time and then the total tokens. This is the total tokens, a round trip that it costs for the LLM call. And it's pretty cool. But now let's look at the actual tables with SQLite browser. All you need to do is go to sqlitebrowser.org and go to the download section and then download the one for your machine. Once you've done that, just simply run it. And then when you come to this screen, you want to click open database. And then here's our logs.database. Now let's just open this up and I'll zoom in. So this is a little easier to see, but changing the font size kind of makes this wonky and weird to look at but it has five tables here. We're gonna look at the chat completions table. And now you can see all of the columns that it actually stores, which is more than what I showed on the pandas data frames. So we have the session ID that we started with, and that's the one we actually printed out. The full request. So if you use this and you click on it over on the right-hand side, you can see all the actual JSON that we used. And then in the response, you can see the content here. This is the actual answer we got back from the LLM. And then you can see it, the total tokens was 515. The prompt itself was 488. And then the completion, which was the actual response was only 27. And then here's the cost uh, is cached, lets you know that was the answer already cached. So if I were to rerun this one more time, I would have another row of data. And instead this value would be one for the other row. I think this can be very useful for if you have a use case, you can determine which open source model, if you want to go that route, since that works better for your use case. My goal this month is to have a video out every day. Please follow along. I hope you learned something. I have more videos about Autogen and AI up here. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comment section below. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.